It's 1159 at Radio Free America, and this is Uncle Sam with music and the truth until dawn. Right now, I've got a few words for some of our brothers and sisters in the occupied zone. The chair is against the wall. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. John has a long mustache. It's 12 o'clock, Americans, another day closer to victory. And for all of you out there on or behind the lines, this is your song. <laughs> Ninja? 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 Captain, a vessel approaching. On screen. We're being hailed. Every weekend over at purewebsites.com, our online store, we have free patch Friday. And that means that every order placed on our store on Fridays is going to include at least one free patch. So that's every order with uh, no coupons, no minimum order, no codes needed. You place the order on Friday and when it arrives to you, it's going to have at least one free patch. Your support means a lot to us financial support is critical. So thanks again to the people who keep us online through purchases at gearwebsites.com. And welcome everybody to our Daily Gun Show. Come to you live every weeknight, ideally. Uh, tonight at midnight Eastern. Yeah, it looks like the audio is working. Uh, we've got our co-host here. We can take his thing off. He doesn't need this on anymore. There he goes. He only needs that harness for doing some of the scaffolding work before the show, and that's all settled now, so we're good to go. And uh, let's see. It's on Fridays. We go live, and we do wrap up the week. We take a look at uh, what... Uh, has been focused on what our Second Amendment protects. So there's plenty of other gun shows out there. You know, we are a gun show, I guess. But uh, plenty of other shows that are going to talk about the red dots and the uh, grip angles and the uh, the new types of sights or something. Uh, we're talking about the rights, the community, the culture, right? The stuff that sticks around and goes past the fads, like the 9mm. And uh, we try to take a look at that stuff. Write it all down, put it all on the internet, put it all around the internet every week. And, oh, I guess uh, we normally don't just look at this little co-host every week. We go over to, uh, what's that thing called, Substack. And I guess uh, somebody didn't get everything prepared before the show. We don't know who, we're not going to point any fingers, fingers at who didn't get it ready. But, um, Substack, there we go. He's acting like he's innocent. All right, we're going to go over here, and there we go. We'll cram him down into down there. All right, so uh, we we'll say thanks to the people that are joining us live. Worm was out there. Aldo, welcome. Chris in the 740. And Woods is out there. Welcome. Good evening. And uh, thanks for joining us live. Now, most people are listening to this as a podcast as we uh, switched over. I guess I should grab some other links over here. As we switched over to Podbean more um, consistently, I guess, now that we've kind of consolidated, maybe that's a better word, uh, all the podcasts over here at the Podbean, it's, uh, we've really been able to see how many people are listening uh, or find out how many people are listening, I guess. Uh, we've got uh, a show going up every single day. Uh, there's only a couple of hundred here now because we deleted, well, we didn't delete, we just moved them from our old server over to here and, uh, well, essentially putting one up every day. So, uh, and then sneaking in for like the weekends when we don't have a show, we'll uh, sneak in an old blast from the past, usually the old interviews. Oh, 
I guess that takes it off of him, doesn't it? Um, some old interviews and stuff. So thanks to everybody who's joining us over there. And we really do appreciate the comments and the uh, thumbs and the stars and the likes and whatever the up arrows are. Uh, those kind of things really make a difference on the podcast. And that'll make a big difference for us uh, going forward. So we really do appreciate that. Uh, and since we're talking about stuff and I can have my screen up, we can also talk about our store. We had a commercial there that DM Foss made for us with the Star Trek theme. And we posted a link. I'll post another link in here. We, again, this is, uh, uh, you know, we don't make a lot of money on YouTube stuff doing this kind of stuff. So um, when people super chat, that's always appreciated. We give the puppy a little treat. But uh, you can also buy stuff. Be a capitalist. Buy stuff from our store. It's stuff that we make or stuff that we've had made uh, based on our designs or people that we know, you know, the community. So uh, much appreciated. So we're going to head over to Substack, and we've been doing, let's go to, let's take a look at our Substack. We're going to go over to the dashboard over here. We'll take a look at those stats. It's always fun. And yeah, see, we're going to be getting quite a few uh, people checking out our Substack, so it's pretty neat. Go back to the home. Is that where we're supposed to go? I don't know. I uh, found a couple of new Substacks. I actually posted a thing asking people um, about... Uh, Oh, no, I don't know where I'm at. But I asked, I put a post up there asking people to tell me about Substacks. Uh, I found a couple of people who I didn't know were doing Substacks. So um, it's just kind of a blog place. So uh, as you see, that's what we're going to show on the screen here. Even though this is kind of recorded as a podcast, uh, we do write everything down. This isn't a scripted thing, but we have bullet points. We have links to all the stuff that we're talking about. And we post that over on Patreon. We post it on Substack. We sometimes send it out as a newsletter. And then we put it on a bunch of different social platforms, either completely or abbreviated, depending on how much they let us type. And the goal here is to get the links out. We're going to talk about stuff that's important work being done, uh, people and projects that are valid, that are changing the dynamic, changing the way that the game is played. And that's what we're really trying to do. We're trying to stop the persecution of gun owners and our property, right? We understand that we can be responsible with it. And they insist either because they're afraid or they're just manipulative. They're going to insist that it's not possible to live safely with dangerous things. Well, right now it's guns. What's it next? Cars that can go fast. You know, what's it going to be next? Uh, sharp things, things that are heavy. It's ridiculous. So, uh, you know, we can stop it here. We can change the dynamic. We can educate and create awareness so people understand that there's lots of positive consequences from guns and they're being told partial story. They're only being told half the story. They're being told a portion of the story in order to manipulate them. All we're going to do is illuminate the rest of the story and end this. So there's people that are doing good work for that, doing other things that are moving the, the playing field moving the line on the playing field. And that's what we're going to try to illustrate here today. Uh, we do that, like I say, on Patreon, uh, where you can subscribe to what we do. It's a good chance to say there's a scroll going to the bottom of the screen. There's no commercials here. I'm not trying to sell you nothing on this show. But uh, you know what I mean? I don't care if you buy nothing. You could buy something from the Gear website store. That's awesome. you know. But uh, aside from that, our Patreons, the people that subscribe to what we do, that's how we do what we're doing. Think of this as like a magazine. Back in the old days, we would have subscriptions to magazines. That's what these folks do. They subscribe to what we're doing. They keep our three servers online for strategic reasons and tactical reasons. We keep things on three servers and just technological reasons. We keep things on three servers. We've got software and then we have time. And that's really the only things that are required to do stuff online. And these Patreons are making it possible for us to do that. Uh, as we have more Patreons, we grow, we have more tools, and we spend more time on this stuff. So there's plenty of things to be done. If you want to be part of that, jump over to Patreon. We don't have any uh, barriers. There's no paywall. Like, I don't put just some stuff behind pay, pay, Patreon or anything. Everything we do is public. That's kind of the point. But sort of like um, public radio or sort of like uh, PBS, you know, if you want to support the work we're doing, jump on board. There's no obligation. You can join for as little or as long as you like. Uh, subscribe at the couple of dollars a month. Subscribe to twenty dollars a month. You know, buy us a cup of coffee. Thank you very much to those Patreons who got like mostly cream in this one. 
Uh, but thanks to those Patreons that provide a cup of coffee once in a while. And then a couple of Patreons are doing the $25 a month. And thanks to them because they're buying lunch every once in a while. Maybe you could say they're buying this dog a bag of dog food. If I fed them dog food. Uh, but anyway, you could go check things out on Patreon or our newsletter, which I don't do that often. Um, but we should probably get going on with the newsletter again. This is the Substack, what we're looking at right now. The Instagram, we do talk about that on Wednesdays. And then the podcast we just talked about over here. Uh, we're going to take a look at news of the week straight from the source this week because I didn't write it all down. And plus now you'll have a chance to take a look at the thing where I get most of the 2A uh, specific news. I think a really good summary each week is provided by NSSF. Uh, if soon as I can find the thing. Is there a way for me to uh, view it in my browser? Thank you very much. So this is essentially mailed to me. You can mail it's mailed out. Let's put it that way. They don't mail it to me. It's mailed out every Friday. Uh, if you'd like, I'm going to send put the link in here. I suspect that'll let you uh, subscribe to it. I'm putting it over here. Feel free to subscribe to it. The NSSF is the National Shooting Sports Foundation. It's the industry. It's the liaison between the firearms industry and the government. So it's the liaison between the firearms industry and the uh, governing and regulatory agencies. So um, uh, NSSF has also taken over SAMI, which is the uh, the standards, uh, like regulations and uh, agreed upon standards for all the specs and things when they say mil spec that's sort of the sammy spec so nssf uh, takes care of that they take care of um shot show as well so they have an interesting role interesting role and one of the things they do is provide this uh, government relations update every friday it comes out in the afternoon and it just came out after i had a chance to uh, or after i already filled out the rest of the show so i didn't have a chance to put all this stuff in here so we're just going to look at it straight from the source uh, and they usually break it down to top news here at the top. Then it'll be national news, and then it'll be state news, and that's about it. So um, they do a pretty good job on this project. Uh, let's see. NSSF praises Indiana governor signing law to end city of Gary lawsuit. Um, political. There's probably a few paragraphs there, so I don't know what that is. We'll keep going. The... Uh, Biden's son, Hunter, is uh, on trial for federal gun charges, and his court date um, is coming up on June 3rd, and I think that's going to be pretty pivotal for the whole, well, for quite a few things, actually, and um, we'll see how that one pulls out. I haven't, has there been anything specifically about this i'm sure some of the lawyer channels have talked about it but has there been any kind of um focus on this maybe the four boxes diner guy has he talked about this be interesting to hear the um significance i guess is that the word i'm looking for of that one so next one up says anti-gun attorney generals file amicus brief to keep the atf fi frame or receiver final rule um, so 20 state Democratic uh, district attorneys generals who all support gun control measures filed briefs with the U.S. or a brief with the Supreme Court urging the court to allow the BATF uh, to write criminal law or responsibly reserved solely, or well, write criminal law responsibility reserved solely for Congress. So obviously a, the NSSF is writing this. The case for Gar Garland versus Vanderstock was petitioned to the Supreme Court following the decision by the Supreme Court to vacate the D.C. Court uh, of Texas or the uh, District Court of Texas decision to enjoin the rule from taking effect. So, oh my goodness. So essentially, um, Hmm. So this one was the frame or receiver, and I guess the uh, fifth court said 
you can have them and then the is that what happened and then the uh or the fifth court says you can't have them and then the supreme court said no you got to rethink that and then there's a bunch of democratic attorney generals who are saying oh please let them keep doing that i think that's what's happening it would certainly be good to see some uh schoolhouse rock type of cartoons keep the stuff all straight without all the legal i don't even know is that shegal what's that supreme court talk you know at that uh, Supreme Court stuff and keeping track of uh, balance of powers. It's getting to be uh, a lot of stuff we're keeping track of. So this next one is the California's one gun a month law ruled on un unconstitutional. Uh, California's law that would ration Second Amendment is unconstitutional according to the ruling of the U.S. District Court. Uh, for California, the judge said that the law didn't meet the burden of a well-established and representative historical analog, which is the requirement set forth by the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin the Loser, uh, that said uh, that restricted firearm sales to one gun a month at the time of the Second Amendment. So um, Judge Hayes stayed his decision for 30 days to give the state time to appeal. The Attorney General told the, well, this is coming from the reload, I guess, that they were reviewing the decision. Of course. Uh, let's see. So um, next one says, NSSF's Protect Liberty PAC announces major contribution from NASGW, which is North American Sporting Goods Wholesalers. The NSSF Protect Liberty Political Action Committee Protect Liberty PAC received a major contribution from the National Association of Sporting Goods Wholesalers that will be utilized to help identify and support the election of candidates who are dedicated to preserving and protecting liberty, freedom, and constitutional rights of all Americans. The $25,000 contribution from the North American Sporting Goods NASGW will, I'm assuming, buy well, buoy, I guess. Okay, buoy, protect Liberty's packed efforts ahead of the November 2024 election to ensure voters in the key battleground states and congressional districts around the country are informed about candidates who will fight for the constitutional rights <coughs> and will not carry out a woke. Hold on. <coughs> Hold on. Where's my mute? Excuse me. Um, uh, will not carry out a progressive far left political agenda that threatens those rights. We are extremely grateful for the generous contribution and belief in the protects and protect liberties PAC's mission to elect candidates who will fight. So, all right. So this is the same guy who is the boss of NSSF. So he's also the treasurer of. Is that right? Am I got that right? I might have that wrong, but um, all right. So twenty five thousand bucks. What is that going to do? Are we going to now be informed about which candidates care about our constitutional rights? I mean, doesn't NRA already do that? Like we can't figure that out. I mean, I guess it's cool, but interesting to see what will happen here. So now we get to the federal news. Uh, if I'm missing anybody, Defense Dad is out there. Welcome. Thanks for the info on those little cars. I was going to get this little dude a little car, but uh turns out they cost a little more than I thought. NSF Control Sammy. Yeah, I forget when. I was surprised when I first learned about it, too, because I didn't know Sammy. I thought Sammy was an entity, but it's uh, just sort of a set of paperwork, I think, so... I guess NSSF took it over. I forget when now. I think I was told, but I don't remember. I think it was like Clover had the guy on who was the president of NSSF, and that's where he said it. And I think I asked a question in there, and they asked. But I don't remember the answer. All right, sorry, I was reading some of the comments over there. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Leave a comment if you want to be mentioned in the live show. And then all the people listening in the podcast will go, dang, I should listen to a live show. 
I mean, this isn't at some convenient time that's super uh, meant to get a bunch of viewers. In fact, we run this show at midnight, just like the beginning of the mm -hmm. show says. Uh, 11.50, wait, hold on. Just like the beginning of the show says. Uh, just like at the beginning of the show, when it says, come on. It's 11.59 at Radio Free America, and this is Uncle Sam with music and the truth until dawn. So we do the show at midnight because it's cool, and I'm a person who's always had night shifts, and uh, I figured do the show live for the people that are up in the middle of the night. Most of the people listen to this podcast, I suspect, are listening to it, doing some sort of shift or drive so uh you understand but uh i figure we got to do it live at some point and we can own the night i guess i mentioned before but i'll say it again uh i'm a big fan of art bell back in the day uh like i say i've had jobs in the middle of the night and art bell was this guy that used to talk about aliens and werewolves and all kinds of cool stuff in the middle of the night for a radio on a radio show that was hours and hours long I just recently found out a couple of years ago that Second Amendment Foundation owned that show, or at least had a big part of that show and had a financial cut of that show. And uh, anyway, I've always thought that was a great format, running a live show in the middle of the night for all the people that are up doing their thing, getting stuff done, resetting the planet, cleaning everything, everything that gets taken for granted by the people that are awake all night or awake all day. And uh I think it'd be cool to have a show all night long. So yeah, if we got maybe, I guess we'd have to have about three or four times the, the Patreons we've got right now, maybe more than that, maybe five times the Patreons or maybe a couple of gun shops on board or something, you know, dropping a couple hundred bucks at us, but uh, wouldn't take that much. And I'd be doing this show every single night, middle of the night. That'd be awesome. But uh, anyway, that would be the coolest thing. Cause then I could bring people on in the middle of the night. We could just have them on for really long format discussions where they're up, you know, staying up for the show. I guess every once in a while I could record something for the people that are too wimpy to stay up all night. But that would be cool, wouldn't it, to have people on in the middle of the night and, uh, you know, let them uh, smoke a cigar if they want or have a drink if they want and talk about 2A and get some shit accomplished, um, bring a bunch of people on, have round tables. Anyway, but uh, we'll keep going. Uh, let's see. Now we'll get into federal news. Uh, Chairman Westerman announces America's wildlife has had Conservation Act. Uh, Bruce Westerman from Arkansas introduced H.R. 7408, NSF supported American or America's Wildlife Habitat Conservation Act. See, we were talking about that Firearms Act, which they made this convoluted sentence to say firearm. This one actually says what it means America's Wildlife Habitat Conservation Act. And then who cares what the, the abbreviation is, because who cares, right? So that actually makes some sense here. The legislation proposes policy reforms to wildlife recovery under the Endangered Species Act, Species Act, including incentives for relief from ESA, regula and uh, ESA regulations when species meet benchmark goals. The bill would also fund habitat restoration Power states, I'm just reading through. So essentially it has policy reforms to wildlife recovery under the Endangered Species Act. I'm just reading through. I don't think there's anything in there that's all that interesting for a gun show, so I'm going to keep moving. It's probably interesting for a hunting show or an animal show. And I'm always skeptical about what they're going to do to uh, our uh, shared lands. But that would be a different show, I guess. Next one is Veterans 2A Protections Included in Spending Bill. Biden signed appropriations legislation that included provisions that would put an end to the Department of Veterans Affairs practice of unilaterally denying military veterans their constitutional rights without a, just, uh, or without a judicial proceeding. Um, beer cats were submitting veterans' names for FBI's NICS as prohibited uh, individuals if the veterans needed a fiduciary or someone to insist, assist with their finances. So um, I guess this one's been a long time coming. I've been chatting about that for at least three years now. 
So things don't happen quickly, but it's good to see this one come to a resolution. Um, next up is House Committee Tackles Federal Government Weaponization. House of Representatives Judiciary Select Subcommittee on Weaponization of the Federal Government asked pointed questions to get answers to why the federal government is working against the American people instead of for them. Oh my goodness. So, let's see. The lawful purchases of Americans, Treasury Departments. Ouch. That's me losing an auction right there. Ow. That's probably something really good, too. The U.S. Treasury admitted that it collected information on Americans' purchases of firearms and ammunition, shopping at several sportings retailers, including Cabela's, and even tracked people using search terms that included Bible. Hmm. Okay, I don't know this one. So does anybody know about this one? I haven't heard anything of this one before. Oh, that was a shawarma machine I was trying to get. Uh, the U.S. Treasury admitted it collected information. So I haven't heard about this one. Uh, I think I might have heard something about this one, but um, I thought this was going a different way when it said weaponization of government. I'm going to open this to full screen. It's driving me nuts that I can't see the sides here. The next one says, Chairman Green keeps pressure on Commerce Department over firearms export pause. Well, that's good to hear, but it's lame to hear that there's still... there's that there's any executive branch influence on firearms going in or out, uh, really. But uh, uh, this one we've talked about over and over, so I'll just mention that one and keep going. Biden administration open border funding illegal firearms trafficking that Mexico is suing over. Who's this by? This is from Larry Keene says Mexico's $10 billion lawsuit against U.S. firearms manufacturers has a sick and twisted wrinkle. The Biden administration's open border policy is funding the same violent narco-terrorists that plagues Mexico with violence, murders, corruption, and sends illicit drugs into the United States. Um, it's kind of weird to say America since Mexico is also America. Uh, Mexican officials claim that U.S. firearms manufacturers are trafficking firearms south uh, which those m murderous cartels, which arms those murderous cartels. That's an absurd allegation. He had a cursory look at how the cartels are expanding their illicit enterprises to include human trafficking shows how the open border policies are fueling not just rampant crime in Mexico, but also the illegal firearms trafficking that's arming the cartels. Uh, okay. So that's interesting. I keep hearing about this $10 billion lawsuit, but uh, you know there's another one. There's a lawsuit against Arizona gun uh, shops. I think it's like four or five gun shops in Arizona, maybe just in Tucson. At least they have branches in Tucson. Wow, is that the end of it, really? Oh, no, okay, it keeps going. Uh, state news, so that was the federal. Now we're getting to the state. NSSF applauds Missouri resolution support in Lake City commercial utilization. So this isn't anything but a resolution that would mark the Missouri General Assembly's support for the commercial utilization and urges the U.S. government to reject calls to end the program that allows Lake City Ammunition Facility to remain fully staffed and able to operate End the program that allows the ammunition facility to remain fully staffed and able to operate as to stand peak capacity to meet the ammunition needs of the U.S. warfighter. Why are they against that? The resolution would mark the Missouri General Assembly support for the commercial utilization and urges the government to reject calls to end the program that allows the city to remain fully staffed and able, I don't know what this is trying to say. I'm guessing it's trying to say that they want commercial. Is that what they're saying? Let's see. So although saying there's a federal law that says the government can't keep lists of names of firearms purchases, 
Well, it has, there's like no registry, but I don't know about firearms purchases. I mean, that would be a semi registry, but, um, yeah, they could probably come up with some BS thing that like, hey, if we track gun sales by cash or something, I don't know, but, um, that doesn't matter. Yeah. They don't need to be tracking any of that really. Certainly isn't solving crime. You know, when you ask them how, how many crimes have been solved with the NICS check, you know, they can't answer that. So suggesting that we need more uh, scrutiny or more, what's the word, investigation of like people doing their thing, is they, they, they haven't been able to prove that any awareness of the government of what we're doing prevents crime. It just is just a, if nothing else, it's an unwasted burden of uh, taxpayer money. But in reality, it's creating something that's definitely uh, dangerous to have. And we all know from Red Dawn that when the communists come in, they're going to say, go find the 4473s and uh, know where everybody's guns are. So that's the bad part. Even if the government doesn't do it, the bad players could do it. And we know that when the government has lists of gun owners, they they publicize those lists. They've done it in New York, they've done it in Michigan, and they've done it in California. All right, so now we have Colorado. Colorado eyes 10 gun control bills. I don't know why they always call them lawmakers. Colorado representatives introduced 10 gun control bills, including measures that would require liability insurance for gun owners, licenses for gun sellers, training for those with concealed carry permits, new limits on where guns are allowed, and a ban on modern sporting rifles, which is really all semi-automatic rifles. Uh, five bills were expected to go to committees for deliberation. The Colorado Senate Judiciary Committee will debate a bill that makes it a crime to carry a gun, regardless of whether the individual has a concealed carry permit. In many locations in land adjacent, okay, whatever, it keeps going and going. It's 10 of them. And I think it's the 29th of this month. I was about to do some calendar work, and uh, I ran out of time. So I think on Sunday I might have some time to do some calendar work. Or maybe, or there is no overnight on Saturday, huh? Maybe I could get some calendar work done tomorrow night. But uh, I know that there's still time in Colorado to uh, get to the testimonials or make pl time to plan to attend the testimonials. But this is definitely a time for Coloradoans to step up again. They've had to do it before, and they've definitely got to do it again. Um, we have pretty good results. Unfortunately, there's a douchebag in California, in Colorado that, uh, man, they make a lot of money in Colorado. A lot of money. But we're not allowed to wonder why this kind of shit happens. There's a lot of money being made in Colorado right now. Uh, Wyoming Governor... Gordon signs outdoor recreation law. So Wyoming governor signed House Bill 67. I stopped taking coffee like noon today, so I'm just really tired. Uh, governor of, Missouri, of Wyoming, House Bill 67, outdoor recreation and tourism trust fund, um, was supported by NSSF into law this week that will provide grants to outdoor recreation projects across the state, including shooting ranges. The law will establish a nine person board and rules for allocating grants from outdoor recreation and tourism trust that signed in law in 2023. The trust already contains $6 million to generate grants for trail infrastructure, access and other such developments. 67 simply creates the structure for how those funds get distributed. The board will consider applications and may award any grant under 200 grand. Projects exceeding 200 grand will need appro approval from the Legislature Select Committee on Natural Resources. Interesting. So there's six million dollars in Wyoming for projects that help outdoor recreation. What kind of range would you build in Wyoming with uh, 200 grand? Uh, let's see. Then we got one from New York City Mayor. Uh, incorrectly blames Ty Hart for crime woes. 
Uh, the New York mayor has a new boogeyman to blame for his inability or unwillingness to seriously, seriously tackle crime in the Big Apple. Uh, this is from Larry Keene. Uh, the New York City Mayor Office of Criminal Justice just released the annual report on firearms trafficking, and the reason they say crime is still plaguing the city is because federal law does not allow them to publicly name and shame firearms retailers in other states with no connection to the crimes committed in New York City that never sleeps. Hmm. So, um, yeah, we're spending a lot of time talking about these. I like it better when we just talk about the headlines on these. Uh, let's see. Delaware approves a purchase to permit, uh, purchase, excuse me, Delaware legislature approves a permit to purchase bill. So that's bullshit. Rhode Island had dual hearings. Uh, n numerous pieces of anti-gun legislation. I noticed on Instagram a bunch of the ladies from the Women for Gun Rights were at Rhode Island. So that must have been what they were there for. Main committee tables, a 72-hour waiting period. A uh, Judiciary Committee voted to table a controversial 72-hour waiting period that would have implemented uh, to make uh, for firearms purchases, I guess. So that's good to hear, I guess. Wisconsin's... What happened to my mouse? Where did my mouse go? Holy moly, I can't stop... Yawn. NSSF backed bill updating Wisconsin's muzzleloader definition signed. Uh, okay. 2A Privacy Act signed in Indiana, headed to governor in Kentucky. Wait. 2A Privacy Act signed in Indiana and headed to governor in Kentucky. And that is to. That doesn't even say. All right, well, that's the end of those. Then it has some other news. Illinois Sheriff's Association files in support of NSSF's MSR ban petition to Supreme Court. A 40,000-member 40, organization uh, of 102 county sheriffs filed a brief with NSSF's petition to the U.S. Supreme Court in Barnett versus Raul that the case that the challenges the NRA's ban on modern sporting rifles. The brief read, as the frontline law enforcement in Illinois counties, the sheriffs represented by it, the organization are deeply invested in respect for the rule of law. As such, the organization believes that allowing unconstitutional laws like this to remain on the books for any extended period makes the execution of their duties significantly more difficult. Awesome. NSSF files a brief to Massachusetts to ban or on their uh, modern sporting rifle challenge. No, hold on. NSSF filed an amicus brief at Massachusetts for their assault weapons ban and then it'll challenge their assault weapons ban. That's what that's saying. Uh, let's see. Judge dismisses NSSF's challenge to the public nuisance law in Washington State. And in Delaware, the appellate court weighs a uh, challenge to their magazine ban. The federal court upholds a Rhode Island's magazine ban. The federal court upholds. So that was a three-judge panel for the Fifth Circuit uphold the man on magazines with more than 10 rounds. And it did not violate the Second Amendment, so that's a bad one. Real Solutions Toolkit. Okay, and sign up for there's the rest of it. So, yeah, I spent way too long. It was like half an hour probably talking about that. This usually is just a moment or two. So we'll dig in. Hillbilly's out there. Welcome. We'll go live tomorrow if you want to check that out. Colorado seems to have a lot of antis. I think it's because California spent a lot of people out of California, and some of them probably went to Colorado. Oh, 
Although saying Lake City needs to up production vastly in preparation for potential war, we need to be making new and shipping out old. I hear we can't get Lake City ammo again because of the wars. Yeah, I'm not sure about all that. But uh, even when there's a war going, they should be saying there's always a, some amount that can go to the country. So if they're making 100, like 20 should always be able to be allocated to the country, no matter how bad the war is. I'm just saying. So um, that was the news of the week. Uh, I don't think I'll do it that way ever again because it just took way too long. But that's that shows you where I take all of that crap and usually condense it down to a couple of bullet points because, again, that takes way too long to get through all that. Because uh, all NSSF is doing is summarizing or putting the first couple of paragraphs of all those articles, and that's just too much to read. You can go read the articles if you want, but we're here to summarize it all right. All right, so let's get into the 2A talk first. Then we'll talk about gun talk in a bit. And then after that, we'll talk about uh, some radio shows that I listen to. And then after that, some military stuff, military interview shows. We've got the calendar, which uh, hasn't been updated. Like I say, I need to work on that. But we'll talk about whatever we got over there. And then we'll finish it up with whatever we got going on this week. So um, let's see. We start off with unapologetically armed uh, a testimony for in support of Missouri's SB uh, 998 an anti-red flag bill or act so uh, we've got people that talk about stuff all the time I'm in that category then we got people that do stuff all the time and unapologetically armed is in that category um, so it's all about letting people know about the people that are getting stuff done and hopefully letting you know, encouraging the people that think, hey, I could do that and uh, making more people aware of the situation in Missouri. Uh, one of the things that we always lead off with each week is our friend Bocchini, who does a show every Saturday to create awareness for uh, mental health awareness, I guess, and suicide prevention. So it's a 20 minute show usually that uh, goes live. And she'll bring up something. In this case, it was sleep is the key to your health. Uh, just something and a way to uh, keep a constant um, focus on how to improve our ability to have conversations about those two out of three deaths with a firearm. The other side uses it against us all the time. And there's multiple ways we can address that. One is to be more comfortable with the conversations and with the topic. So Brooke does an awesome effort at that each week. It's definitely worth your time and worth your support. Uh, one of the shows that's interesting to check out is Costly Conversations, and they had a live um, Ask Us Anything type of show with a liberal gun owner uh, asking a bunch of different questions. On, at the same time, I was on a show, I think, or listening to different shows. So it was for me, it was crossing my... Uh, attention but uh it's definitely a good one and we should see more of these people on two sides of a spectrum having conversations uh worthwhile lets us see how to where we have common ground and where we can um tread on the other things all right ozzy's joining us welcome in illinois speaking of illinois vulcan is out there Thanks for the feedback. Much appreciated. And again, there's a bunch of people watching. I'm not sure if uh, everybody's new to the show or not, but let us know. Feel free to leave a comment. If you got a question or something, feel free. But uh, digging into a new project from Professor Yamane uh, at Lake Forest, Wake Forest University. I guess I've always said Lake Forest University. So it's Wake Forest University. Um, he's going to offer a, oh, no, I forget, seven-week free webinar, uh, free course of his uh, class that he teaches on uh, guns and society. So it should be pretty fun. Uh, you can sign up for it. There's going to be a cap on 500 people. I think he said it's around getting up on 300 people now. So there's still 200 slots left, and there's no homework, and there's no real effort you have to put into it unless you want to and uh if you want to there'll be stuff to listen to and to uh, participate in 
Uh, so join us on Monday. So I'm going to be taking part of that for sure. And uh, we'll probably chat about it in uh, either this show or some of the other stuff that we do. Uh, one of the chats, that, one of the shows that we watch on the regular is The Forge of Freedom uh, from Alex Uli in Indiana. Uh, this is a good one, Liberty and Responsibility. Uh, good focus on this concept of the responsibility that's required for liberty. Let's see. Then we have Four Boxes Diner talking about uh, maybe a slip of the tongue of one of the chief justices who was talking about um, a different case, but alluded to the way that she alluded to a pending case is an indication to the Four Boxes Diner guy that we might see a really good decision coming up here on the... Um, on the whole concept of the executive branch creating law and their ability to do that or not, since that's under scrutiny right now from that fishing case somewhere. Um, I think this was uh, his dissection of her comments and all the consequences of you know what that in what that could potentially mean. Uh, this is Gun Owners of America talking about Biden having to sign that law for the veterans. And I can't remember. Oh, this is um, the armed attorneys talking about a case that is about machine guns. And for the life of me, I can't remember it now. It was decent. It's them essentially uh, suggesting that there's a case that might be uh, worth watching. I mean, they're all worth watching, but uh, I guess if you had to limit what you're going to watch. So speaking of, wait, this isn't the thing I was thinking of. So this is uh, Sisters in Arms. They do a show, a TV show over in, um, I guess it is in Rhode Island and Massachusetts. And they had the Connecticut Women for Gun Rights delegate, Mary, and this guy and i didn't listen to the show but it's called the unlocked truth but they do this uh tv show they're on episode 31 this was riding shotgun or wait this was yeah riding shotgun with charlie and meet the pressers when they do their combo show they had a bunch of people on who were at the ambassador academy i learned a lot on this one ambassador academy I can't remember if it's its fourth or fifth year and uh, creating ambassadors for the shooting industry, but also for act advocacy. So uh, created by Dana Mueller and it's hosted in Florida at the W O wait W O F T where our families train uh, shooting facility and a lot of fun listening to this one. Everybody knows each other and they all uh, had a really good time. Uh, to, doing an after action of the event. Uh, then we have the Walk to Talk America, and they do a live podcast each Friday, usually, uh, where they uh, chat with either members of their own uh, board or other people. And again, trying to, uh, what do they say? Well, they focus on the intersection of guns and mental health. So they both educate the physicians and the medical health professionals, as well as gun owners uh, on both sides, both ways. So it's, um, it's worth listening to. Uh, they also had a second show. Was that last week or is it this week where they had a second show? I think this was last week, but I missed listing some of the stuff from late last week, so I figured I'd put it in here. Um, this was uh, a talk with somebody who's works for or created the Vera Safety gun safes, and it uses a new technology that doesn't optically look at fingerprints. So it was interesting hearing about that technology. I don't think it's brand new or anything, but I had never listened to the t to the discussion of it. 
I see everybody's chatting out there, but I don't think I'm missing anything. Let me know if I'm missing anything. I'm not really. I've got the, that's just my own fault. I have my monitor so wide right now, that, or my screen so wide on my monitor, I should say, that I don't even see where the comments are over there. I moved it a little bit. So if I'm missing anything or if I skipped a comment, let me know or a question or something. Anyhow, so we'll get into the gun talk. So uh, she fires, does her show every Sunday and she just got back. So she did her show right after coming back from Dallas, attending the, uh, empowered two way, right? Um, the, the, female event that happened in texas there it's texas gun experience so it sounded like she uh boogied right back to florida probably had to get back to work or something um but that was worth listening to she goes live every sunday um it's always cool to see people who are um willing to participate with like collaboratively or with other people or whatever you want to say, like share what they're doing. So you've got gun owners and you've got people that have owned guns forever. You got people that are just getting into it and right. Like that's one way to think about it. And then you got new people or you got old people and you got young people. And then you've got all the different things that, you know, make us whatever our jobs and our, and our, um, how much I think of our, uh, life experience that's what I'm thinking of and you know all these different things that bring us to well that we have with us as we come to guns so people that share that and um who show up to those experiences are awesome and it's really cool she fires has a great uh project going she brings a lot of people around or a lot of people together that I don't think I mean I've done this for a long time I don't think anybody's brought uh, the kind of group together that she fires brings. So it's really cool to see, um, her shows and to see who all shows up. It's not, it's not anything like I've seen anywhere. I'm trying to think of. No. So yeah, it's been cool. Uh, then we've got Rob. So I found out while I was doing the Instagram show, uh, that uh, one of my friends from back in the day uh, who I've been following on Instagram and on Amazon because he writes books now or he puts books together there. I guess they're technically picture books. Uh, anyway, he's got a YouTube channel. So if you're into AKs or if you've got a passing interest, casual interest in just the cool look of Soviet rifles, then um, and you're interested in the variations of them, uh, check out AK-47 or what does he call it? AK-47 uh, catalog. Oh, shit. I probably should have clicked like this. There we go. Uh, I can't play it because he pretty much just has music going during it. I'm sure it's copyrighted. But I clicked on this one because it's one of my favorites. The Tantal over here is pretty cool. But right before the Tantal, you had the Onyx. And, uh, oh, wait. Was the Onyx right before? That's been a long time. I think the Onyx. Anyway, that guy over there on the left was pretty freaking awesome. This one's pretty neat too. But anyway, the Polish cranks essentially are super, super cool. And they had a lot of neat tech in them. And they just look super cool. I like some of the parts on them in that. Anyway, uh, this is, um, yeah, it's an Onyx. This is pictures. So, you know, some of us have seen pictures in books back in the day, but Rob, had access to them, has taken amazing pictures of them. And they're specimen pictures. They're like museum quality pictures. They're pictures for people that are building or um, doing some kind of art or something, uh, technical drawings, uh, or trying to recreate specific, you know, accurately. Anyway, you can buy these books too. He makes those pictures available in book format over on Amazon. Uh, go to ak47catalog.com. Check it out. Uh, so then we had Ryan Shotgun with Charlie had Aaron from Throom. Uh, Throom's a cool company in New Jersey that makes uh, rubber self-healing targets. Uh, I've been wanting them to do, be a, podcast, a sponsor of the podcast, so I'm going to keep bugging them. But uh, 
yeah, they're cool. And they're cool. People, they were cool people just from meeting them at SHOT Show. Uh, but seeing an hour or whatever of Aaron having fun with Charlie, you can tell they're just a cool company. Uh, so I found a new podcast. I'll put a link to it out here if anybody wants to check it out. Uh, I was checking out uh, an interview with a sheriff here in Arizona, and it was a good conversation. So then I went to go find another interview with that sheriff, and I found one, and it was with this guy on this podcast. It's called the Blue to Green podcast, and it's um, an ex-Marine Ex police, and it is the um, it's to bridge the gap between police and marijuana uh, users, I guess. So uh, it's a blue to green podcast. He essentially is in normal in Arizona. That's a that's a marijuana group, and then he interviews police people, police different types of police. Uh, people in different occupations in the police really interesting podcast. So I've been listening to some of those. And then he had this interview with this hippie farmer guy who started out as a tech guy, made a bunch of money and then has done all kinds of different farming uh, here in Arizona. And um, he uh, uh, is trying all different kinds of farming. And now he's got a uh, puppy. And now he's got a farm up there by uh, kind of where Alan Anchor are. So uh, pretty cool. Um, let's see. Woods is taking off. See ya. Uh, Ozzy's seen he's getting frustrated. His snake skin has not arrived yet. I've got some, but mine is fake. Mine is cow skin squished into snake skin, I think. And then I had some ostrich skin. I think it was the same thing. But it looked kind of like it. Uh, AR Patriot uh, or AR Guns um, back in the day has been uh, going live again, uh, hosting shows. Again, I mentioned with She Fires, you know, it's always cool to see people who uh, participate, who go live and keep the conversation going and keep the uh, community together. And uh, same way, AR Patriot uh, is doing the same thing. Uh, bringing some of the reloading people, some of the gun people, some of the people that have been on guests or listeners to other shows out there and he does his at a random times kind of during the day he's been doing some reloading stuff in the evenings so uh, very cool thanks for doing that uh god john crump had aegis leather on or aegis leather had I'm listening to ozzy over here talking about leather sorry uh aegis gun care on and you always hear about aegis he's a Aegis supports a whole bunch of people out there in the community, uh, but not, you know, they're very, well, for a long time ago, they were on shows, but they haven't been on very many shows. At least I haven't seen them as guests on too many of the shows. So uh, it was cool to see uh, them on and get some time to chat. So you can check that out on Crump Show. Uh, Tony, who uh, does the uh, Saturday show with me, is a co-host on like three or four other podcasts during the week, and one of them is oops, one of them is the Gun and Gear Review podcast. Uh, I just found out you can watch that on YouTube, so I've been watching that one. I think it's on on Tuesdays, uh, right at the same time as two other things. There's one other thing, so it's uh, the one that stays on longest, though. The other things all ended, and it stay, it was still going. Um, our friend uh, Bullets for Bucks has been starting his podcast. Uh, he goes live and he's been talking hunting and in this case talking ballistics and uh, calibers, uh, hunting calibers and, and the ballistics of them uh, with Reloading Weatherby, a friend of his from, I think, Colorado, maybe Wyoming, maybe Utah. I don't know. But they're friends. They go hunting or they, they're uh, hunting channels. Uh, let's see. Ghost goes live on Tuesdays, and he had uh, Riker on, who has Life Skills, a uh, group that uh, teaches kids the kind of stuff we used to learn in Scouts back in the day. So uh, interesting conversation there. I missed a good chunk of that one. I think that was one of those days where there was like eight things happening all at the same time. 
let's see, we talked about Alan Anchor a minute ago, and they have been starting to post some tutorials. So if you're interested in how things are done and like to see the process behind it, or if you're doing this kind of stuff and you'd like to uh, see some of the tips and tricks from somebody who does it a lot, uh, check out their channel. They've done a bunch in the past, so maybe this is the uh, beginning of more. I suspect uh, getting over there and giving them a like and giving them a question or something would be the way to let them know that you're interested in what they're doing. But uh, using VersaWorks, so I never heard of that one. Or maybe I've heard of it, but I've never used it for sure. I don't think I know anybody that uses it. it seemed a lot like photos, uh, like an illustrator, I guess. But um, yeah, it was pretty cool. It's not a very long one, but uh, it shows how to take essentially a graphic like this and get it into this thing you'd want to have stickers made. And if you need stickers made, you might want to talk to Alan Anchor here in Arizona. Uh, let's see. So one of the channels we listen to is um, the S2 Underground and uh, it's sort of a communications channel. Uh, an Intel channel, and they had an interesting video. I think this is a new one. It might have been an old one. I was just screwing around, and this one was suggested to me. But it's um, essentially talking about using uh, some small, uh, some it's a manual from the Marines on small unit tactics uh, for train analysis, um, using some of the techniques that you'd use to fortify, fortify, fortify uh, your position at a at your home you know your home is your position essentially so just applying some of the fundamentals that basic marines would use or marines would use you know basic fundamentals marines would use that's the way to say it i guess i'm getting tired but um very cool um thought process thought experiment or whatever although saying he loves s2 they really put a lot of effort in i mean like say I, if i could uh do something on the daily and really put effort into it, I'd probably um, reference their stuff or like try to hook up and like play their stuff because, yeah, a lot of good non bias well, there's always bias, but practical, pragmatic, whatever the word is, like uh, no frills, um, Intel, Intel drop. So, really good channel. Another really good channel is worth checking out is uh, DM Foss. He hosts a bunch of different shows. And one of both of them actually are in the middle of the night, like this one. Uh, the overnight happens every other weekend on Saturdays. This weekend, we will not have an overnight because it's lame. But uh, every Wednesday, he does the mouse party, and that one is also middle of the night. Worth checking out if you're up in the middle of the night like this, uh, then there you're not uh, s stuck listening to reruns and after the fact. Lots of people are up in the middle of the night, and some of us are are going live to give people something to chat about. Uh, the Wednesday night show is kind of a no topic, bring your topic. The overnight on Saturdays, every other Saturday, are typically focused on firearms related stuff or Second Amendment, but uh, not always. All right, I guess we're getting into, oh wow, Apologetically Armed is up in the middle of the night. Let's rewind real quick. Thank you for being one of those that get things done. We had you right up here at the beginning of the show. Can I play this? I'm going to go ahead and play this. Hopefully it won't get copyrighted. It's not that long. In favor of Senate Bill 998. Come on up and testify when you're ready. Please make sure you fill out a witness form for our records. State who you are and proceed when you're ready. Thanks, Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, Susan Myers of the 20th. As a leader volunteer for two national nonpartisan organizations, both focused on women and firearms, I have met and worked with women who have experienced tragic and horrific events in their lives. Women who come out the other side resolve to never allow themselves to be anyone's victim ever again. It's important you know the volunteer work that I do, the hours I put into helping women learn to keep themselves safe, and the relationships I've made with women who are, in fact, survivors of violence at the hands of individuals known to them. It is for these reasons that I am here to give voice to the women who fully understand the dangers involved within domestic violence and yet are adamant in their belief that firearm confiscation schemes are not the right path for our state. 
That's because we know, despite whatever good intentions may lie behind these confiscation tools, the truth is they can and do have troubling and dangerous consequences to the very women they purport to help. Leaving the individual free while taking the gun does not remove the dangers victims face. Abusers have used red flags on their spouse or girlfriend as a way to exert control and to keep them feeling vulnerable. Don't think it happens? Let me share a case out of New York where a woman's ex-boyfriend who had a restraining order out against him alleged she made remarks causing him to believe she was a threat to herself. In the petition, this man lied about the time frame of those remarks to say they occurred within the past six months of the petition as the law required, despite the judge knowing of the false statements out of an abundance of caution, a temporary extreme risk protection order was issued and her first pistol permit was revoked, all without her even being aware it was happening. Thankfully, this woman didn't just hire a lawyer to regain her own rights before a final ERPO could be ordered. They also challenged the New York law's constitutionality. This is a portion of the judge, judge's ruling from late December 22. This court is not unmindful of the dangers firearms may pose when possessed in the hands of a person suffering a mental illness, harboring a criminal intent, or both. However, when viewed objectively, 63A's goal of removing weapons from the otherwise lawful possession of them by their owners without adequate constitutional safeguards cannot be condoned by this court. While some may advocate that the ends justify the means in support of 63A, where those means violate a fundamental right under our Bill of Rights to achieve their ends, then the law on its face cannot stand. Thank you. I have no questions. Thank you for your testimony. Any Anybody else here to testify in favor of Senate Bill 998? Well, the big question, was there anybody else testifying with you? But that was awesome. Thanks for doing that. Um, the uh, points, you know, just saying it's not fair or we don't like this is necessary. Those are required so that the representatives understand the voice of the people they're representing, right? But to give them examples of how what they think is a good idea can be used by people who are have ill intent against the people they representatives are intending to help uh that's opening their eyes that's that's that awareness that i mentioned is it's that's epic so there's a lot of people that are content to chant and the chanting and the the you know my rights my property is has got its place and it's like say it's even necessary it's just not our only thing you know it might be one of the items we need in our repertoire but it's certainly not the only and uh thanks unapologetic arms for doing that and uh for being in here being joining us tonight got here right at the end too because i think this is pretty close to being uh well we're getting actually we've got a little ways to go i've, I've blabbed around pretty long this the beginning of the show Imagine being an abused female and you can't get a gun or a man who is falsely accused and threatened by a, another uh, and you can't get a gun. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's see. So next up is the radio shows out there. I'm apologetically armed to saying me and one other guy were in support of the anti-red flag law. Two spoke in opposition the head of mom's demand and a lobbyist for the mayor of st louis okay so there's Ooh, my goodness there are a couple of radio shows that i listen to on the regularly on the regular and uh three of them are from the same place uh cape gunworks or rapid fire radio uh, they do a Sunday show. They do a Tuesday 
segment of the Grace Curley show, and then they do their own show on Wednesdays, the long format show. So this week was pretty epic. They did a se- segment with Grace Curley. They did the show on the on the radio on Sunday, and uh, both uh, Toby and Brandon were there. That's the two owners of the shop. But then on uh, Wednesday, they had the first hour of the show, and then the second hour was uh, Mark from Four Boxes Diner uh, was the guest, and they chatted about uh, some of the different things that are happening with, uh, guess what, the Supreme Court, what do you know? So it was a pretty good week for that one. And Gun Owners Radio, um, I didn't listen to it. I was driving, I think, on Sunday. So I'm not sure what happened on Gun Owners Radio. Uh, let's see. So now we're going to open up guncalendars.com, which should be a hyperlink. I don't know why it isn't. Boom. And this is, again, thanks to our Patreons, one of the projects that we've had going. How long have we had gun calendars? Let's go find out. So if you go to the Wayback Machine, you go all the way back, and then you plug in the website. And it looks like we've had that going since 20... Well, it's only pulled since then. Let's see what this looked like in 2013. Oh, no, that was somebody else. So, looks like maybe in 20 we started guncalendars.com. No, that can't be right. But anyway, so, no, that can't be right. No, maybe it is. Maybe it is. It's possible that uh, 20, that can't be right. That's only a couple years ago. So, whenever. We've been having now. We'll look at it off air. Um, but right now we've got uh, the calendar up here and then the events over here. So if you're looking for what's coming up, like I say, I need to update this. But we've got quite a few things coming up here uh, as far as pending legislation and testimonies. We've got uh, some different events, industry events that are happening. And let's see. Uh, as far as anniversaries and stuff, we've got the anniversary of the uh, Hillary Hole, the Smith & Wesson caving in to the Clintons in uh, the year 2000. Browning patented a bolt-action magazine. we got the anniversary of the, um, quote, give me liberty or give me death. We've got the U.S. versus Cruikshank which is the um, kind of a weird one. It was a court case in 1876 that says the Second Amendment does, uh, let's see, it does not, wait, rules of the Second Amendment does not guarantee it only protects the states? I don't think so. This is, I thought, the one that says that um, the, this, the Second Amendment only applies to the federal government and not to the states. Puppy. I was doing a lot of things today, and he had to supervise. So now he's very tired because he had to supervise all day, and now I'm not doing anything, so he has a time to uh, to nap. So he's napping over here. Uh, we got the uh, Wanamaker Gun Show coming up at the end of, well, I guess that's in April, coming up in a few weeks. We got the uh, International Cartridge Show coming up next weekend. We've got Big Sandy coming up. No, I guess I shouldn't say next weekend. The Cartridge Show is coming up on the 27th through the 30th. Big Sandy is coming up next weekend. That's a big shooting event here in Arizona. We've got the New Hampshire Freedom Rally coming up on the uh, 23rd of March. And I need to go jump over to Instagrams because one of the things I need to update in the calendar is on Unapologetically Arms channel over on Instagram, I believe. How am I going to get to it? I wish there was a subscription list like you've got on, uh, I guess there kind of is. 
I just have way too many people in my subscription thing, I think. Oops. Um, but don't you have this? Yes, you do. So we've got the from Unapologetically Arms Instagram uh, coming up in April. There's a rally coming up in Missouri. I need to put that in the calendar. Uh, that'll be 10 to noon at their state capitol. Pretty good rally. Uh, a pamphlet, whatever. Handout. Well done. I'm going to go over here because that reminds me that we've also got gun. Oh, come on, what's going on? Gun Owners Lobby Day coming up in Illinois. Uh, that should be happening pretty soon here. Okay, what happened? I clicked on the wrong thing. Oh, that's why I'm just clicking on the wrong thing. That's why. Uh, let's see. Illinois is coming up on April 18th, so the day after. And then I just mentioned that uh, New Hampshire is having their... Uh, Freedom Day, I think. I think that was tentative. So if anybody knows about that one, let me know. And we now know the Missouri one is happening, in fact, on April 17th. There's something else that I was going to put in here. Besides, I think it's Colorado's testimonials are coming up. And yeah, okay. With that, I'll quit trying to think of stuff. Uh, like I say, I'll try to get before too long here, maybe even before the next show. Uh, we'll get that all updated, and then it'll be even easier because then I can just copy and paste it over into here, and it will just be here right for the show. I mentioned earlier that I was listening to that sheriff, and this is that interview with the sheriff. Um, is this with the Blue Green? Yeah, this is on that Blue Green podcast. This is a pretty good one. And uh, they talk about all kinds of cool stuff. Penal County is uh, one county north of us. So we're in Pima County. And, you know, we're kind of on the border. Like a chunk of Pima County is on the border. And then Penal County is smaller than us. And they're above us. And they're kind of... I think that might be where Allen Anchor are. And then Maricopa County is where Phoenix is. And that's kind of up and over from us. So anyway, this is a county that's adjacent to us, and this is the guy who's second in command in that county. And if you've ever heard of the sheriff of that county, he's running for Senate. So this guy's probably moving up to some Senate aide position or something. It's just interesting. So they're having a good conversation there. Then you have, um, and that's that new podcast I was telling you about, where it's an ex-Marine, ex-police ex uh, now, I think he's the treasurer or something of Normal, which is a marijuana organization, and he interviews law enforcement. And they talk about more than just the marijuana topic, but they do talk about the marijuana topic and uh, policing issues. So it's a pretty interesting show. Uh, then you've got Combat Story, which is the... Apache helicopter pilot, and then he went into the CIA, and now he interviews people, and he's interviewing a guy from a unit that is to be, is yet to be discovered. There's no name for the unit. Nobody knows publicly what this unit is, but it's a special missions unit that uh, does things internationally. Um, it sounds like, to some extent, clandestine. So, uh, you know, some version of CIA or something close to CIA. And a really interesting conversation with a guy uh, in that unit. Uh, this is the first time it's ever been written about. So pretty cool. Uh, then you have a conversation at the team house talking about, to a guy who's been uh, in the Secret Service for a long time and talking about specifically what happens with the State of the Union. That's like a 45-minute conversation, kind of like an extra over on the uh, Team House com uh, show. I missed some other stuff here. Team House today had uh, a uh, Max Sog V guy on. Awesome conversation of a guy from Vietnam, and then he ended up uh, being a para-rescue, uh, and then ended up being para-rescue for like the space shuttles and para-rescue for 
some other interesting uh, situations. And then uh, he lives here in Tucson. Pretty yeah. cool. Uh, let's see. So then we get to our stuff that we did this week. And we had a conversation with Derek from Kids Safe on Monday. Uh, check that one out. Uh, Derek was at uh, San Diego and did their had their 19,000th kid or 29,000th, I forget, 19,000th kid come through uh, the BB gun range while they were in San Diego. So that was pretty cool. And uh, since we chatted for a bit there, uh, we decided, hey, let's uh, have you on the show. So we had Derek on and we talked about making content over on the um, coaching show on Tuesdays. So if you're like I'm saying, hey, get get involved, do something, be part of this whole thing. If you're like, hey, I don't know how to do it, figure out how to do it. It's pretty easy. Lots of tutorials out there. Plenty of people willing to hold your hand or walk you through it or let you copy off of what they're doing or help you or do whatever or challenge you and compete with you or, you know, give you a, um, a push when you need it. There's all that out there and more. So on Tuesdays, we try to uh, keep that thing moving keep people uh, getting people better, getting people on board, getting people started, keeping people going and uh, join us for that if you want. And then on Saturdays, we talk with uh, Tony about uh, answering gun questions. And I think we answered two of them. So we did pretty good. Only in thinking two hours, we ended to answer two questions. There was a lot of people asking stuff live and we were having a good time. So uh, that one was a good one i don't think we'll have one this well we won't have one this week because i've got stuff to do on tuesday so uh stay tuned for one of those again the weekend after and then on wednesdays we do something similar to what we're doing right now except instead of looking at youtube stuff we're looking at instagram stuff and this was a pretty good week for instagram all right that is it uh, maybe similar to special activities division of cia it sounded like intelligence gathering for sure and it was somebody that was born in was he born in egypt so whatever it was he had a massive um accent you know like the from whatever language so i don't know if that was like part of it or not but super interesting definitely uh um somebody that was doing action like immediate you know action definitely an operator so all right, with that, I'm going to end it. We, uh, I think we got through it pretty good. I don't like the way we did the, um, the 2A news part. Like I said, I'll, I'll try to get the extract of that for the show from now on. But I do like that on the fellow Jake Lee Arm showed up. Thank you for that. I do appreciate you staying, getting up, either staying up or getting up in the middle of the night and uh, being part of the show. Very cool. And everybody else that was out here, thank you for joining. It does make the show go more fun when there's people interacting if you're listening in the future as a podcaster that's where most of the people are listening uh you're not alone uh, you can always join us we do this show live at midnight uh, i alluded to it earlier but if i had the opportunity we'd be here every night at midnight we've done that before this is episode 1715 so i mean for a good chunk of the time of those seven 1700 episodes was live every night at midnight and uh you know, I can do that again. It's a couple of years there. I wasn't able to do it financially. I'm getting better at being able to do that again here. But uh, yeah, you can be part of that. Join our Patreon to be a subscriber to what we got going on here. Or go over to our, your website store, buy some stuff. Uh, we've got all kinds of things over there that we've made or that we've had made. Um, almost all of it has something to do with what, is, what our second protects. We will be back um probably tomorrow night doing something maybe otherwise uh we'll see you oh we know what you're doing we appreciate it very much on apologetic i'm just saying been busy and not catching you live glad i made it yeah very much thank you for doing what you're doing and uh appreciate what you've uh what you're the time you're putting into it uh we'll throw a commercial up here for the store maybe something else and we'll be back uh whenever we're back again
GearWebsites.com is your source for firearms-based playing cards and books. We also have mugs, shirts, and posters with designs that we've made live. Of course, we have patches. Every Friday is Free Patch Friday. We appreciate your support. Thank you for shopping at GearWebsites.com.